All right, so today I'm here at the um, Friends of the Lower S-U-W-A-N-N-E-E. -E. I guess that would be Swana Knee and Cedar Keys National Wildlife Refuges. Uh, we're going to do the River Trail and the Team Ridge Trail if I have enough daylight left. I got a, well, I thought it was a bit closer. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a drive getting here from um, Central Florida or from... Um, the villages more or less um so but beautiful oh my god once you get past uh, Donellan, um you're just driving through the country the whole way so i was just thinking well if i don't even get to hike the trails at least i got the beautiful drive getting here so um let's just get started on the trail um but uh and of course there's a there's a lot down here um i'm going to be coming back uh let's see begin with the river trail loop along the shaded old logging road through a seepage swamp over a low bluff. So we'll get all that on the video. Um, I, there's a number of other things. Uh, looks like they've got some great fishing down here. Um, uh, he said locals have uh, kayaks for rent, maybe even canoes. So let's just get going. So this is a map of the area. Okay. Um, this is just a road. I don't know if I'll have any daylight left today, but it's supposed to be just a nature drive. You can see there's all kinds of, there's Turkey Foot Trail here. Uh, you got Barrett Creek Trail. So you could just spend a day just kind of driving around in here. I imagine it's going to be very pretty. I'll try to maybe, well, probably won't get any of that in today. And this is what I was talking about. He said this shell mound at, at the information office would be a great place to come. Um, evidently there's some, some piers in here where you can fish off of them. Um, so you can see, uh, you could just probably stay in here. He says there's also a lot of artifacts from, uh, the Indians. Uh, so that would be a fascinating day right there. Uh, let's see. And then, well, like, looks like we're heading up this way. Maybe spend a day up here on the Dixie mainland. And here's the natural pine forest trail up here. Looks like they got a viewing tower. So man, you could really, uh, <laughs> You could camp here. I mean, I, well, I haven't seen, I don't know where the camping would be. I forgot to ask that question. It's got to be somewhere around in here somewhere. If not, you could probably look into uh, some place to stay in the area. So let's read a little bit about this. This is the Lower Swan, Swanee National Wild Refuge. It's over one of 540 refuges in the National Wildlife Refuge System administered by the U.S. Uh, you can read that. The uh, 53,000 acre Lower Swanee National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1979 to protect one of the largest undeveloped river delta uh, estuarine, gosh, I'm not, probably not pronouncing that, systems in the United States. And then, uh, so hopefully we'll see some of this wildlife here. I'll let you pause right there. And then uh, travel the miles of auto routes and walking trails available. So I should have gotten here earlier, but uh, anyway, I was just more about getting a drive in today um so this is talking about the uh, the bottomland hardwoods the lower offers a diversity of environments from floodplain wetlands to upland forests so anyway i'm wasting time let's just get going uh the i'm going to do the river trail first and and then hopefully we'll get in the uh the other trail i can't remember the name of it so let's get going well i can honestly say if, <laughs> if this is right one third mile uh, well, you shoot, we could almost probably film the whole way, but uh, I did want to get um, this right here. Well, let's see, the Swanee River Trail and Boardwalk. So hardwood swamps can be viewed along the River Trail Boardwalk, close from a 3.3 mile down to the river. Oh, one mile loop. Okay, so yeah, it's, uh, you're going to get about 1.3 1 miles, so, so that's good. Yeah, I, man, when this said 0.3, I was thinking, oh my gosh, drove all this way just to do 0.3. Well, here's the, here's the actual picture. Okay, so yeah, you can kind of see it's coming in, and then you do and do this loop. Always like a loop. So here's the parking area. Okay, so we're, I guess there's an observation deck here. Well, let's get rolling. So this is what it looks like here at the beginning of the trail. And uh, let's see what it says here. Lob, lob lolly pine. Man. We got some big pine trees here in Florida. Look at the size of these things. Although I've seen them bigger up in the, um, uh, geez, I can't remember the, the name of it. I'll get it here in a minute. Here's one more sign. 
let's get this and uh, partner the purchase of 4,077 acres recently in 2008, the donation of 785 acres of former Cypress Company land, which you stand. So let me get up close so you can pause the video right here if you want to read that. But I don't want to take too much time. Let's get going. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta roll, baby, roll. So I'm still near the beginning of the trail. Quite beautiful. What's kind of amazing to me, look at that, man, that is just awesome, is that I am the only person here. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful day. I mean, uh, now it's, it's it's late or getting kind of late on a Wednesday afternoon or Thursday. I think it's Thursday. And uh, so I can kind of see where, you know, there might have been people here earlier. I uh, wouldn't want to get this late a start on, on a trail like this. But still, I mean, you know, it's, if you're kind of in the area and spending a whole day here, I mean, I'm just, I'm shocked that I'm the only one on this trail and, uh, this was clued into me by someone. They said this is really just a beautiful, beautiful hike. And they weren't lying. So far, so good. You know, I wonder if they actually put this trail in or this might have been some sort of road. Because you can see we're kind of above the swamp. So if this is all fill dirt, and this is always nice. Uh, there's a bench here. Bench provided by friends of LSNWR 2015. So there you go. All right, so when I get something a little bit different on the video, we'll we'll cut the video back on. But this is what it's looking like here in the beginning. Really, really awesome. So I did want to get this, um, you know, all along the trail here. This is always cool. This is the Sparkle Berry. You know, I do like to try to learn how to identify the uh, the wildlife and the uh, uh, the trees and stuff. Um, this is. Uh, cavity nesters uh, I guess that right up here they've got a birdhouse that they've built um, and then here this is an American holly right here now I'm not going to do every one of these signs but what I have I'm just saying it's a nice touch there's also another bench back there so lots of places to sit along the trail so this is a silver barrel so, oh, man I can't rem I swear growing up in Virginia I don't remember the names of any of these trees but you can see here's another one up here but this is what it's looking like now we've kind of broken out of the swamp and we're into more of just a forested type of area so let's keep going so i'm at the end of the point three entrance to the trail uh, once again a nice bench uh signs along the way so we're well we'll make a right and just loop around and come out on the left and uh so you can see, this is these are amazing. I mean, I tell you, we got these up in Michigan too, because uh, I used to do a lot of hiking there, where they build these these walkways, and uh, you just think, man, the amount of time and money, and plus, you know, working the work crew that would have to uh, to build these things for us to enjoy. I mean, you got to remember they they probably had to hike through all of this. I mean, or, um, or have some, I don't know, I don't, someday maybe I'll get to see them build one of these walkways and see how the heck they do it. Because, man, I wouldn't want to be down there on the ground in this building the walkway. But look at this. This is, this is really, really cool. I, I wonder how long this walkway is going to go. But you, you're, you're above the forest floor looking down. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I can't believe I'm the only person here. <laughs> still because it's you know this isn't this is like you know take your date out for a hike uh, you know not serious hiking you know just your casual clothes uh no preparation no bear spray uh you know just just enjoy the day type of hike uh which is usually brings out the tourists uh you know or even even some of the locals to a certain degree so it's anyway look look at this oh my goodness Boy, that you know, that's what you got to do. Sometimes when you're out hiking, I know a lot of people don't want to be bothered, and I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always want to be bothered because, you know, I, I love telling people about the hikes I've done and about the channel, you know, outdoors with Kirk now, on Rumble, and uh, so these are these are really, 
really fun uh, to meet people and then they tell you about something like this and you one day you just wake up and you think god dang it that guy told me about this i'm gonna go check it out and boy i'm boy am i glad i did look at this this is awesome boy this boardwalk was pretty long but you know the, i didn't really think about the feel of it you know you you're you're kind of hiking through a swamp. <laughs> How else could you hike through a swamp like this, you know? Because, um, you know, if, I mean, it's just cool. It's just really cool. I This is kind of strange. It's saying parking to the right, I guess. This will just take you back to the parking lot. Maybe, maybe I've, well, boy, that can't be the whole trail. Didn't feel like a mile to me. Well, I guess we'll have to see how far this goes. Uh, prescribed fire it's all about habitat fire is just as essential to Florida's natural communities as rainfall historically the landscape was shaped by fire ignited by lightning today however most naturally occurring fire is suppressed for a variety of reasons limiting diversity of our habitats to restore this diversity we use prescribed burns to mimic lightning and safely return the natural force yeah I've seen them burning quite a few times Hmm. Okay, well, uh, well, here you go. <laughs> Here's another side. Looks mostly dead. That's a wax myrtle. All right. So let's just enjoy. You can see, I mean, my goodness, you know, that's what I was saying. This would be a great place for just a, a family outing or uh, bring a date, you know, or you could uh, just put your flip flops on and do this trail. Extremely well maintained. Uh, just a beautiful hike. So I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get both trails in and then maybe we'll get a little bit of that drive in. I don't want it to get too dark because I, I just assume not drive all the way home in the dark. I don't mind it getting dark when I get on the roads that I'm familiar with. But, you know, unfortunately I'm following the GPS the whole way here. So I'm on, you know, I'm, I'm in portions of Florida I've never been to before, which is pretty cool. Uh, like I said, beautiful drive if you ever want to make it. So this is why I do these hikes for you. So I had to backtrack. Um, when I say backtrack, I swung around through the parking lot and just came down that point three mile. This actually just takes you, I was calling it Team, team Ridge, it's Tram Ridge, T-R-A-M, Tram Ridge Trail. That just takes you right over to the Tram Ridge Trail, which is a 2.8 mile hike. I'm hoping we're gonna get that in today. I've got, uh, I've got very much daylight left. And I remembered that there was a left-hand turn here because I thought it was just going to, if I went right, it was going to loop around. And I said, well, if it's, I'm supposed to be able to see a river. <laughs> there was a left back there. So I, that's why I had to come back. So you're going to want to come down here and make the left first before you uh, hike out on the right. So, and I can see the river from here. So, but much, once again, more of a boardwalk here. I assume we're going to get to that uh, observation area. I don't know how long this will go on for. It might just, just go down to the river. So I don't mind hiking through that swamp one more time. Boy, did you see that squirrel? <laughs> Holy moly. That sucker jumped from there all the way over to there. I swear there are some nimble little creatures, aren't they? Holy moly. we got one more sign coming up. Let's get that on the video real quick. See what it, what it says. Uh, let's take a look here. So, uh, oh yeah, they're talking about the cottonmouth. Is a, by the way, I almost stepped on one of those one time. Came with, I just happened to look down and my foot was going down on it. That snake would have bit me for sure. So, yeah, you don't want to get bit by a cottonmouth. So, which is amazing. They're kind of, uh, that was up in Virginia. So I guess the cottonmouth is kind of up and down the, uh, the east coast here. I don't know if they have them, you know. Well, I'm sure they have them in other parts of the country. I'm just wondering if out west because... West is more rattlesnake type of environment there with the deserts and whatnot. Let's see what this one says. This is a bald cypress. I'll let you read that. I got to keep going, but let's just get it on the video. That's what it looks like. So you got these right here. Awesome. So we're coming up on the river. We'll get the next clip there. The boardwalk just brought us right down to the river, and here's your little observation platform. So Originating at the, man, I ain't even going to try to pronounce it, Akin Finance, whatever, National Wild Refuge in southern Georgia. Wow, the Suwannee River flows southerly through Florida, 265 miles, wow, and terminates at the Gulf of Mexico. 
designed as one of Florida's outstanding waters. The Suwannee is the second largest river in the state with flows at its mouth exceeding 11, good Lord, 11 billion gallons a day. I'm going to let you read the rest of that. Uh, man, I just, if I wasn't hurting for time, I'm going to, I, I do watch my own videos, so I'm going to go back and watch the video myself because I've, to read the, read the signs. But this is a view of the river. That is a, good Lord, look at that. That is a big river, isn't it? Doesn't it just make you want to just get out there on like a, don't you wish you were in a canoe just in, just flowing along with the water, you know, uh, enjoying the day? Maybe some snacks uh, back when I could pound down some beers, you know, with towing your beer behind you. I bet that water's probably nice and cool to keep the beer cold. Ah, oh, man, memories, memories, memories. But let's uh, let's get up on the viewing stand real quick, and we'll get it from there. You know, I'm surprised that you know they wouldn't put a little dock out into the water there, so you could you could do some fishing too. That would have been a nice touch, but. So here it is from the viewing deck. Wow. I'm going to take it nice and slow and be quiet. Awesome. So if you take that left turn, it's, it's not much of a hike. The good news is I lengthened my hike today because... I, we're going to get in four miles, no problem whatsoever. I got plenty of daylight left. One reason I like hiking in the evening, you know, I'm just on this uh, boardwalk where we've already gotten some video. I just, I'm a sunset person, man. I know that a lot of people are sunrise. I am just a sunset. And isn't that beautiful? Look at the sun. I'm going to get the sun as I go along here because it's going to pop out here in just one second. And uh, so I'll get to en enjoy that. On that 3.2 mile hike, I mean, that's, I just love it as the sun sets over the, over the forest. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. So one thing as I move along, I wanted to talk about this. I see a lot of these sticks on the walkways, uh, especially when I was heading out to the river. We haven't had that much bad weather around here, so that really indicates to me that not many people hike this, um, you know, like I said, I'm the only person here. See, there's another stick just laying on the on the walkway. So, I, you know, that blows my mind, but it is, I don't know, this area seems to be like really, I didn't realize Florida still had natural areas with the whole darn world moving to Florida. I thought for sure, especially in my area, that the, the rest of the state was just getting, you know, plowed under and, and houses going up everywhere, but coming here there's a lot of a lot of natural country there was a state forest i went through where i'm going to go back there and there was about four or five trails there that uh that we can get on the video it's these are all within striking distance of my house this being the longest drive you know but that's uh that's the beauty of florida there's so many trails that you can do but i just uh, i just want to make that observation that you know you if you come here you you'll probably be all alone also i mean who knows maybe not on a weekend i don't know Hey, I got hit. <laughs> I thought this was funny. Imagine being a plant and called a horrible thistle. That's a horrible thistle. Anyway, so yeah, I'm getting ready to come up on the um, uh, Tram Ridge Trail. Uh, you can see the roads right up here. Now, if you go to the right, that takes you back to the parking lot, uh, just like I did when I had to go back to get the left fork in the view of the river. And then uh, the trail is going to go to the right. And there's a sign right. Well, we'll get the sign on the video real quick let's let's get up here as fast as I can move so so now we're gonna last time of course I didn't get it on the video but I went back to the uh, parking area so okay 2.8 miles so here's the tram ridge loop trail uh, roads right here that goes down to the uh, park office so let's just uh, enjoy hiking this is what the beginning of the trail looks like so this will be a good day for me I mean that's just about all the hiking I, I I wanted to do today was maybe a, just like a four mile hike because uh, you know I just didn't don't have the energy for you know a huge five mile I'm, I'm really up to about five or six miles now if I push myself but a lot of times I fall down sometimes a couple of times when I when I try to bite off more than I can chew after breaking my neck there you know so I try to try to I'm trying just to push it a little bit further each time 
Uh, today I was feeling good and that's what I talk about on my videos is sometimes you feel good and you got to take advantage of it. I was feeling good today. I've had a few bad days, so that's why I haven't been out making hiking videos. Let's, uh, let's just enjoy. Well, maybe once upon a time that used to be a trail. I don't know. It says area beyond the sign closed. I don't know why it's closed. Who's going to hike through there? <laughs> Unless you're a hunter, maybe. I don't, I don't know. So we're coming up on a sign here. But I thought I'd get that. I always try to get the weird stuff on the video. Why? Why do you need a sign there that says this area is closed? Uh, I guess maybe if you burn that area, you could possibly go down in there I wouldn't have any desire if I'm just coming out to uh, hike a trail so I think we're kind of seeing up, up until this point we've just been hiking parallel to the road which is just over to the right over here um, so now we're coming into the, the uh, obviously the loop and uh, it says you are standing at the beginning and the end point of the loop trail both forks will lead you back to this point the left fork will lead you along a historic logging tram ridge through a volunteer uh, uh, what does that have as a volunteer stand of pines? <laughs> I mean, if you know what that is, leave me a message. Did they volunteer to grow? I don't know. And then the right fork will have you meandering through a diversity of habitats, uh, cypress domes. So as we see transitions, I'll get it on the video. Let's get going on the loop trail here. Well, this is kind of neat. I always try to get it on the clip when you can kind of peer off into the forest, you know. you got a nice view. Uh, sometimes it's not all about going through the thick foliage. Uh, sometimes it's just about the view of looking across the uh, the underbrush here and seeing, you know, for a long ways. You can even see the trees way on back there, and that's uh, that's where that sunlight coming in from behind on a uh, on, on an evening sun uh, really uh, just adds to the ambiance here. So kind of more of the same as we move along the trail. I always find that unique here in Florida. You know, you got the palm tree right next to a pine tree, uh, and then the oaks. Uh, so we're still just kind of in the in the piney area. Although, what was that? A beach? I can't remember. Dang on it! I swear, if I hadn't hit my head going down those stairs. Uh, so far, no wildlife, no birds, no uh, no bears, uh, nothing. If I get, to, I hopefully we'll get some wildlife on the video. I, I don't know. A lot of times on these hikes, I don't really see anything because, you know, they're used to being hunted and uh, they're better at hiding from me than I am at finding them, that's for sure. So I didn't want to point out, I you know, I didn't even bring the walking stick because uh, this is kind of what you're hiking on, at least on this, on the tram ridge is, I mean, this is like walking on carpet, you know, it's uh, just easy on the legs, uh, kind of more the same as we move along. I'm enjoying it very, very much. I, I needed a day like this uh, without the walking stick just to, just to have a nice day. You know, this is uh, this is quite, quite a great hike. I'm glad that I made the drive. It was, it was a haul. Well, could be some wild pigs back here. That's usually when you see something like that. A wild boar. Don't want to run into those. But you can see we're getting a little bit of a different look. We're coming out. We're coming out of the pines here, and into the uh, what, what, what do they call it? Cypress or cypress? So, uh, and then of course off to the right here is just uh, more pines. But I'm assuming the trail is going to loop back into this, which would be pretty cool. But I just wanted to show you that little borehole there, and then also where we are transitioning. So I wanted to show you this. This is one thing I don't like about this trail. Is the road the main road coming in is right here and I thought I was hearing car noise um, I guess you could come into the trail off of the main road if you wanted to um, but I don't like uh, I don't like the feeling of being next to the main road and of course I got the trail sign there uh, you know I always like to feel like I'm deep 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 in the forest uh, but I guess we're gonna now that we're making that turn I'm assuming we're gonna be looping away from that road so we might get that feel uh, once I can't hear the car noise no more, but I'm not sure we're going to get deep enough in the forest to even kind of get that feeling of being back in the back in the woods away from civilization. As I move along, there was a there was another bench back there, and here's a bench, and it says a uh, bench provided by friends. Uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, you can see we're kind of transitioning. It's a uh, well, I guess the sun is setting a bit, um, but uh, look at this. Boy, perfect time to cut the video on right there. Coming up on a little 
little boardwalk. Uh, this is always a nice touch. Let's uh, let's get up here to the sign as quick as I can get there. So uh, vital, vital vernal ponds. So let's see what it says. Restoring wetlands is a vital role of the Lower Swanee National Wildlife Refuge. Short lived ponds are perfect breeding grounds for frogs, essential creatures for the forest. When summer rain pools in this sloth green, tree frogs can grow up safe from hungry fish. All creatures need a place to live. I love that stuff. So you can see a little well maintained uh, little um, walkway just continuing. But you can see, boy, it's uh, look at all that, man. If that's wild pigs, and man, whew. they must be fearsome beasts to be able to dig that soil like that, huh? But yeah, isn't this uh, wonderful now? I'm not hearing so much of the car noise, and uh, we just got came out of the pine. Look, here's another walkway coming up. Um, this is really, really cool. I uh, I don't know if you're ever down this way. I mean, I would I would make a whole day out of it. I, I'm I'm going to be coming back. Um, you know, I can only do so much before I have to get home and take care of my medical uh, stuff. But uh, so here, yeah, really, really cool, huh? Look at that pine tree, man. We got the big pine trees around here in Florida. So that you know, up in Michigan, they they had pine forests like this. Uh, they did preserve a little pockets, uh, maybe one or two or three. I'm not sure. But, you know, they logged, I mean, when they came in back in the day to want to talk about destroying the environment, they just would just log everything uh, and just clear cut it. And there was nothing, you know, none of the old pine. They take hundreds of years to grow. So there's another another bore, uh, bore hole. I assume that's what that is. If I'm wrong, just leave a comment below. But that's what I've been told is that, uh, that that's what uh, digs those holes because they're trying to get at the grubs and stuff under the ground. So, you, well, you can see this would be walking stick territory. So I got to take it a little slower with these roots and holes along here. So the trail has transitioned quite a bit. Look at that pine tree. Good Lord. All right, let's keep going. So we kind of departed the uh, the swampy area. And uh, now it's just more or less back to uh, trail hiking through uh, the forest, more or less. I mean, you know, that's the feel of it. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. You can see the uh, probably a burn right there. This is really, really cool. I like the way this is uh, moving from one one view to another. Look at here. We got something coming up. Let's see what we got. And is this a creek that we're going to cross? Or looks like they've thrown down some gravel. Okay. Well, I guess that's all it is. Is just they put some gravel down to so we'll continue on this way. Well, I'm still hearing the car noise, but I. It is cool. I mean, it's a it, it's a neat neat hike. We're coming up on another sign here. Let's see what this one has to say. So I just wanted to show you what the trail's looking like. Uh, still hiking along the gravel. There's uh, so now we're coming out of that back into kind of a piney area. Uh, I assume that the footing's can probably going to get uh, as easy as it was. Let's see what this sign has to say. Hold on. Let's get around here. Okay, here we go. Transition zone. Variety attracts low wildlife. Refuge restores transition zones between native communities. Salamanders live in transition zones. And pitcher, pitcher plants appear when frequent fires occur in the transition zone from pine forest to wetland. Oh, there you go. And I always talk about transitions. Now I got a sign to tell you that we're transitioning. Pretty cool. So this is what it looks like. If it, if we get another uh, another look, we'll get another clip. Uh, but this is God. I know I say it way too often. It's just just gorgeous. This is kind of cool as the sun sets. Kind of feeling like you're walking through a little tree tunnel. So, just thought I'd get a quick clip here of this on the video. You can see that uh, beautiful oak tree. But like I said, we're still walking right along the road right over there. So you never really, well, I guess if you tripped and broke your leg, you could crawl over to that road somehow, maybe. Because <laughs> you know? uh, you're not going to feel get the feel that you're back way deep in the forest, that's for sure. So back when I used to travel a lot, hotel rooms got extremely expensive. 
and I would always pull over in Ohio or various places and try to find little niche spots like this where I could just hike in, throw up a tent, stay for the night, wake up early in the morning, you know, cook, warm up some coffee, have a, have a quick breakfast, throw the backpack back on, and just go back to the car. Now, I, they close at 4.30, and I don't think they're going to check. I asked him if my car could stay there. He said no problem, and there's no signs that say no overnight parking. So this would be a great place if you're traveling through Florida, and you're poor like I was and am, you know, I'm not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination, although I'm, at least I have a house over, and a roof over my head. I consider that wealthy. But uh, so when you're traveling, I mean, you know, uh, especially if you're younger and you just want to see Florida, this would be a great stop. And just hike in with your tent, man, and just throw it up right there. That's that's what I would do. So we're just kind of continuing. That's, you know, plus, that's a great place to have a picnic. I'm surprised. You know, why not put a picnic table in there? You know, because you've got that beautiful bench in that little area. Um, that would be a you know wonderful place with that seat, uh, maybe a picnic table. You know, uh, I would also put a probably a, well. I would they wouldn't want to come out here to empty it, but I wouldn't think it would be a bad idea to put a trash can in there just in case. Uh, you know, you get these people where they they drink it and they don't want to carry their plastic water bottle and they throw it on the ground. You know, sometimes if you just provide a trash can, they'll at least put it in there. All right. Looks like the trail's looping back, but I wanted to point out. And I, I didn't see any signs. It looks like uh, there's been some mountain biking back in here. So I'm not sure, but maybe you can mountain bike this trail too. Uh, it looks like it, somebody might have done it. Um, and I didn't see any sign that said no pets. So I, I'm not saying that you can bring pets here. I should have asked the guy in, in the information uh, place. But uh, you, I do believe that you could probably do this trail with pets. I mean, how are they going to, even if, you, if well, even if it was no pets, I mean, you could point out it because there's no sign that says that. And, uh, and and plus, me being the only person here, I mean, do you think they're going to come back here and see if I'm walking a dog along the trail? You know, just be sure and throw the poo over into the woods. Just bring some latex gloves. That's what I used to do when I had a dog. And uh, and you're on a trail like this, you don't, you don't even need to bag it because you don't want to be carrying it along. And, you know, animals go in the woods. And uh, there's just not too many here. If you had a hundred, you've had a thousand dogs on this trail, you wouldn't want to do that. But uh, an occasional dog here and there, I think that'd be fine. Look at that, look at that sun. Now I'm walking right into the sun. Isn't that awesome? Awesome, awesome. I don't know if you ever saw tremors. <laughs> doesn't that doesn't that look like a sandworm just rolled right along there and dug that whole thing up? If that's wild pigs, man, that is just a hell of a lot of digging. It looks it, it looks like a river of dug up sand. So, but anyway, I wanted to get back to the clip because what blows my mind and it just used to happen to me in Michigan is uh, the guy working in the office here. I'm not dissing him or anything, but I mean, you would think that they would be out hiking these trails all the time. Now I'm sure he's done them maybe once or twice, but he was questioning whether I could finish the trails off before the sunset and i'm like well wait a minute has he ever hiked them before because that would happen to me in michigan you pull into the ranger's office and you ask them okay you know where can i get water along the trail because you're backpacking um you know where's a good place to hole up you know have uh what what are the better campgrounds and they i don't know i said well how can you work in the ranger's office and you've never even hiked the trail I mean, <laughs> you know I mean, you'd think that would be a job requirement or something. If you're going to be a ranger and you're going to hand out brochures for the trails that people are going to come in by, you know, every day to hike. I mean, shouldn't you have to hike the trail to kind of be able to give people tips and advice before they get on the trail? I, that's that's typical. It really is typical. Well, look at that. Kind of looks like a tunnel again with that sun right in front of me. Kind of more of the same, but isn't that cool? Just kind of the white, the white sand with the sun shining up off of it and walking beneath the tree canopy here. Let's get off to the left. And I like the uh, the fact that the trail, if you look, it's it's kind of a, they must have brought in a bunch of uh, sand to, to put this trail in because it sits above you know the rest of the forest. So you kind of get the little bit of teeny ridge type hiking along a ridge type feeling so and that's cool so kind of transitioning not heading due west now uh kind of coming into 
the piney area again. I guess uh, this is probably part of the same piney area that we started out with. Uh, I do love the look of the, uh, the sun hitting all of these, um, ah, those, well, those saw palmettos, I can't remember, but I think that's what they are. And, uh, well, anyway, baby palm trees, if you want to call them that. Um, but this is, this is, we got to be getting near the end of the hike. I just thought I'd get another clip before we uh, finish things off here. So I think I'm seeing the road up here. So that last clip, I was correct. I do believe we are finishing off the hike. Here we got another little bridge here with some, well, I guess they probably bring ADVs back here to maintain the trail. Now we're going to get another cool clip. Uh, stay to the end of the video because I'm going to get the bat house. Uh, they got a bat house here. And when, of course, I, we won't see any bats, but uh, I think they got a sign there. So I'll read that and uh, let's just enjoy the last of the hike. Okay, well, maybe I wasn't coming up on the last part of the hike. Uh, so we are transitioning again into kind of an open area uh, with just the sandy trail. I think we've seen this before at the beginning of the hike. Um, I bet there's not too much left, but I did want to get this transition. Pretty cool looking off into the distance with the trees. As we move along, I'm just going to get this up on the video and you can pause it right there. Let's hold it there for just a second. All right. Well, this makes more sense now. <laughs> Your walking trail was once a logging railroad bed. I told you it was sitting up higher than the rest of the area. So catface, longleaf pine, and hardy cups are reminders of the turpentine industry that flourished more than 100 years ago. Okay, well, I wanted to get that because I kept telling you that if they put this trail in, they, uh, they did a good job, but that was... Uh, so that was done by a private company for um, for logging. There you go. So as I approach the bad house, it says private property, no trespassing. Can you imagine owning that piece of property? And there's electrical lines going in there. So there must be some houses back there or just one house. I don't know. That would be an awesome place to live, I can tell you that. But we're coming up on the bad house. Now you can see right up here, if you do visit this area, that this is the main... Uh, area with all the maintenance equipment and um and that's where you get information you can get your brochures and this is the bad house now isn't that cool looking i wonder if you were out here in the evening if you would just see them just come out of there by the hundreds and why would they want to hold up in there i mean how did they get the bats to hold up in this bad house other than someplace else i don't know but i'm gonna i'm gonna just kind of go through this sign <coughs> i'm not gonna read it all you can just pause it and uh and me too. I'm going to read it later on. So let's get pause. Pause. Especially after COVID, maybe it's time we learned something about bats, huh? There you go. Pause. There you go. So here you go, if you want to learn about the, the Wuhan bat lab, there you go, that might be a link you want to go to. That's true, a lot of people, they hate bats, man. I, I love bats, I think they're cool. So here's, bats need our help. And then of course, right up here, I'll read the top, the very top. Thanks, uh, Guiano. We have bats in our refuge. It's fully occupied. This bat house could be home to 100,000 bats. Wow. Who could eat 257 tons of plant-eating insects in just one year? Bats roost under loose bark in tree cavities and in foliage such as leaves, dead palm fords, and Spanish moss. The loss of a large hollow trees has led to the loss of roosting habitat or colonial species of bats. That way bat houses are needed. Well, that'd be cool, man. If I had a piece of property in a not HOA, wouldn't it be cool to build a bat house? <laughs> you know, and just put what the hell to keep the mosquitoes away from, especially here in Florida. Hey, there you go. If you got a little bit of land or you're a farmer or whatever, you might want to build your own bat house uh, and give give them some habitat so that uh, you can go outside and, uh, and enjoy the uh, evening without the bugs all over you. That'd be like a natural insect repellent. 
I, I swear I'd do it if I had to, if I had a piece of land where I could put a bat house in. Maybe not one that big, but it doesn't look like it would take that much to do it. A smaller one, especially if that can house 100,000 bats. That's crazy. All right. So on my way out, as you can see, I've got plenty of daylight. Unfortunately, I'll be driving back in the dark, but I just wanted to show you how you could take your day. So you, if you're coming in from this direction here, like I did, uh, you come into the, the main area, get your, get your maps, get your brochures and everything, uh, and then hike the, um, the river trail and then do the, um, the other trail. And then look at here, lower Swanee Nature Drive, one half mile. So yeah, I, I'm gonna get that. Hell, oh, while I'm here, who knows when I'll be back. Um, and then of course, Shell Mound, we, I was talking about that. That's, boy, that's 15 miles. <laughs> so I'm not sure you could get all three in, but you could certainly do the hike that we just did and then, uh, and then hit the Swanee Nature Drive. Uh, I'm not sure how much video I'll get on that, but uh, I'm gonna do it right now. I was trying to wait for this thing to quit beeping, but I'm coming into the nature trail. God dang. It, it, who prompts these car manufacturers to be so damn annoying? But what I wanted to point out, you know, getting onto the, the nature trail here is that there's nobody here. There's not a car. I mean, it, I, I waited a long time for that beeping to stop, but there's not a car that way. And there's not a car behind me. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's, what is the temperature? 71 degrees. I just, I'm just amazed. And, uh, I wonder if I'm even going to see a car. <laughs> Nobody hiking the trail. Refuge open from sunrise until sunset. So, okay, so I guess I got to get out by sunset. Uh, you know, that's the thing, though. I mean, I wish they'd put it. Well, let's see if there's a time on this sign. So it's a nine mile loop to the south exit. Well, it might get dark before I get out of here. I, well, and I, I hope I don't, I don't see a gate. Um, so here you go. Uh, nine miles. Road is managed to maintain. By the Wild Loof Refuge, you've got uh, fishing's permitted. Uh, of course, they have hunting. You'd have to consult. Hey, I just saw a car drive by, so there's one back here. Um, wildlife, you and of course pet. Oh, pets on a leash. Yeah, that answers that question. And of course, bicycling. All right. Well, hell, let's just. I'm just going to do all nine miles. I don't. I'm not going to be taking video the whole way. I'm sure it's just probably going to look a lot like this. Um, but I, I, I. Well, let's see. Right now, well. My clock, I never set it today. I, you know, it's out of protest. Okay, my clock says 6.07. It's really 5.07, so I'm thinking I got about an hour of daylight. So that gives me plenty of time to travel nine miles. But this is kind of what the nature road is looking like. Um, you know, to me, it's just a typical uh, road, you know, a dirt road that you'd find, you know, various places. Although I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what's so special about this, but it's going to be cool. I'm going to enjoy it and then head on home. So there you go. So this could add to your day as, as you hike uh, those, those two trails. Heck, if you got here early enough, like I said, 15 miles down, you could do the shore thing too. Uh, I'm going to come back and do that because I want to spend a whole day there. I'm going to, I'm going to get there early and just, because I, I'm actually going to, I asked him, uh, hey, I don't know if this is true. I, I did want to hit this up real quick. Um, I asked him about fishing and uh, there's some website that you got to go to and he said you could get a free Now, I don't know if this is true I, I but I was told that you could get a free fishing license and I would love to Just sit on the pier and do some fishing uh, down in the shore area Because uh, I'm catching release only I, I hate to admit it I don't, I don't even know how to fillet a fish, you know, and so I just uh, I just enjoy fishing and catching them and just throwing them back so let's see what the sign says here and then I'll cut the video off. Uh, yeah, I'm prescribed fire. We've, we've seen that before. So this is kind of what it looks like. So for nine miles, I'm going to enjoy this and just chill out. Drink some water and uh, chew some gum. Peace out. Stay free. I think this will be the last clip on the video. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, the free, the free state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis. Check it out. Got the deer coming at me. There he goes. So that's two. Usually you might see a couple more. I don't hope that one of them don't run. I, I don't know if you ever had that happen to you. That happened to me. 
I was just cruising along looking at the deer and I'd like two or three of them which that was just two that crossed the road and then you know I'm looking at them and I'm just kind of sitting still and the next deer came out and BAM hit the side of my car and put a dent in it I'm like holy mo you know isn't that amazing how they can just roll right through that brush by the way like I said not a car behind me not a car in front I mean it's uh, I'm astounded I, I this is this is like a perfect day I mean I can't believe uh, that maybe it's just maybe that's why the guy told me about it this must be a hidden secret because it's not that far from from central florida i mean no more than well i mean i guess you could say maybe a couple hours i don't think it was that long i think it was only about an hour and a half or so but um they do have all of these side roads here that'd be kind of a fun day you know if you wanted to just park your car there and just go hike through the woods i mean you know just just you, you're certainly not going to see anybody that's that's for sure um they say just do not block the gate so i don't know i don't see anything that says you couldn't hike it all right all right i lied about not getting more clips and no nature on it but what's really cool is you're kind of driving through a swamp and uh you know the swamps on both sides i'm trying i'm hoping maybe we'll see a gator but boy i tell you they hide down in there if i get a gator we'll uh I'll jump out the car and then get him on the video, but uh, you know, once again, nobody, nobody's driving back here. It's just me, um, which is astounding to me. But talk about a beautiful nature drive. Uh, this is, this is really cool. Um, I'll try not to take too much more video. I mean, you can only take so much of the same old thing, but it, it, it is a cool transition to be seeing the swamp off to the side. I'm trying to go slow enough that you know, if something's over there, I'll see it. Maybe, who knows. Well, you'd want more time to enjoy this. So you got Pond 4 Road just going off to the left. And then the main loop road, I had to actually pull out the map to understand what was going on. I think I got enough daylight left. I'm going to go down here. Now, I'm wondering if there's fish in these ponds. This is, and that's why it's called Pond 4. I, I, I guess I've passed three ponds. Um, and I was wondering, because I asked the guy if he could hike around back here. You know, all those little side roads and everything those are what they're marking as trails so yeah he, he told me you could definitely come back here and, and do some hiking now i would say this <laughs> your car is going to be a dusty muddy mess after you're done with this so i've got a plan on it so here's i guess this is the pond here <clears throat> yeah there it is so there's pond four okay wow there's got to be fish in there and how would they know if you fished it So if Pond 4 is right there, where is the road going? Well, it's going down here ways. But I, I man, I tell you, rather than go to the shoreline, I, I, maybe there's got to be some perch in there maybe or something. I mean, I guess that'd be a question you'd want to ask at the information desk is, do the ponds have fish? And or are you allowed? But I don't, even if you're not allowed, I don't think there's going to be anybody to catch you back here. Uh, so see there you go so there's you know so they are actually marking these little side roads as trails that you can hike so that's what that that's all about because i was looking at it and i was going man and hiking trail hiking trail hiking trail well that's that's what they're saying they are so yeah you could come back and just do this anyway don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole i i want to get out of here before it gets dark so but who knows where i'm going now i mean because it said pond four road why well it, on the map it just supposedly comes to a dead end so we'll see what happens so in case you're wondering pond four road just came down to uh three gates you got three gates one to the right one here and one there those are hiking trails so you could just come down here and do these hikes although you know the grass don't look all that cut so you probably would want hiking pants on uh, maybe a little vinegar around the ankles uh, because uh, the wood ticks uh, could get on you but uh, so that's it for for pond four road running out of daylight I thought I'd come over here and look at the pond I was hoping I might see a fish jump in there but looks like it goes kind of down 
should be deep enough. Interesting. But yeah, you could just sit here and toss a cork out there. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Don't don't see any fish moving. All right. So I've come to another fork. This is Barnett Creek Road, dead end. And then you got your main loop over here. It's gonna get dark on me back here, but I'm gonna check out Barnett Creek because I think somewhere on the map is an actual trail trail. You know, instead of just like the, you know, those look like just kind of like roads back there. Okay, so I don't know. I'll let you know when we get to what could be another hiking trail. So you, you could make a whole day out of this. Let's see what happens. Check this out. I'm just coming down Barnett Creek Road. Of course, there we got the uh, the moon up in this way. I love the evenings. Look at that. Isn't that. I'm going to get to drive home by that. I'll probably pull over a couple times and look at it. But look at this. Man, do you feel like you're in Florida now? All by myself back here. Look at that. We got about maybe 15 minutes, half hour of daylight left. But anyway, all right. So it's just about dark and I was driving past and I saw these, uh, this little parking area. And you can see it's uh, it's wooded in. I don't see a name for the trail. Just kind of walk back. I mean, check it out. Oh, this is just a little observation deck, huh? Well, let's see what's over here. Let's just hike it real quick. Hold on. So it comes out to like a little gazebo. Check it out. You can well, you can't see the bench. Man. Huh. And there's like a pond here. I'm not sure how you'd well you could possibly well possibly cast off of this. But man, that is beautiful. That's cool. Probably not enough light for you to see, but uh I knew I'd seen on the map that there was a little observation thing. Well, you, can, you can hear the rustling. Hmm. All right. You know, one of the things I hadn't thought about with the Prius Prime is, you know, I'm, I used to always do this when I was younger, go uh, adventuring, you know, in a car back when gas prices were dirt cheap. But the thing is, it's got, you know, it, it cuts off. It's on the electric power right now with the lights and everything. So you don't have to listen to that gas engine running when you get out to explore real quick. I just think that's pretty cool. I don't know. I guess electric cars would be the same. There's a lot to be said. I, you know, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm liking my hybrid. I'm sure it's going to cost me 10 years from now when I got to replace the, those batteries. But maybe by then, either the batteries will come down in price or they'll have a new type of battery that will fit that car. You never know.